Okay, give it to your doggy. Good job, you're so good at cleaning. Do you want to walk into the living room by yourself or do you want to walk with my hand? Yeah. Yes, you can walk with my hand, boo boo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany. I am a mom with some good tips, some good tricks. I actually have a video that I posted that is kind of like part one of this. The second I made the mom hacks video, I was like, oh shoot, I didn't mention this and this and this so I have to do a part two. My daughter is napping right now, but she is teething, so I'm expecting this to be a not great nap. So we're gonna bust right into this. I always hit you with a little disclaimer. This is just what works for me. If it doesn't work for you, that is 100% okay. Motherhood, postpartum pregnancy is so individual, but I do feel like these are good blanket overall tips that will work for a lot of different people. My number one tip, and I actually learned it from someone that watches my videos, so thank you, but it is that those suction mats for mealtime stick better if they are a little bit wet. Not soaking wet, but I have tried it and it does work. They still can come off. I have heard the bamboo mats from Amazon suction really, really well. I have not tried it because I, like I said in my first Part one mom hacks video, I'm very minimalistic when it comes to mealtime items, so I just have the easy peasy mat. If you're just starting your journey, maybe try out those bamboo suction cups, but if you already have something like the easy peasy mat, try getting it wet. Number two, one of my favorite mommy items to serve as a snack or part of a meal is something in a pouch. They are so easy. There are so many different kinds and brands. I don't really have a favorite, but we do yogurt pouches, chia seed pouches, applesauce pouches. If it's in a pouch, I want it. There is something to say about the easiness of the ready-made pouches, but you guys told me about the reusable pouches and turkey baster you can get on Amazon, and it's an option that can be cheaper. You have the ability to make your own purees, whatever it be, so you know exactly what's in it, and it's better for the environment. Number three is creating a lovey item. If you don't know what a lovey is, it's kind of like either a small blanket or a little soft toy that a child grows an attachment to. Yes, they are usually chosen by a child. Not every child has a lovey, but if you do want to help create a lovey, if you see your child developing an attachment at all to an item when you breastfeed or bottle feed, if you have them hold or you hold the soon to be lovey, this will help foster an attachment and a lovey can be really nice. It can also be kind of bad to have, but it's really nice to have for naps after the child is one or we take it on car rides. If we're out, it just helps your child have a sense of home and safety. It can also be called a transitional item. If you ever notice that your child, and not all kids do this, but some kids, my daughter does it, where she will take an item from room to room with her as a transitional item. She did this a lot in her mommy and me class. When we would start in one room playing, she would always take an item with her into the other room to play. It is not good or bad if your child needs a transitional item, if they need a lovey or don't need a lovey. The other good thing about helping your child pick the lovey is you can help them pick an item that is one, not a one of a kind item, something really expensive or hard to find because you are going to want a lot of levies. I have one in the house, one in the car, and one at grandma's house. Number four in my part one of this, I talked about the cleanup song and I realized I forgot to mention the big umbrella that that is under and that is chores. Yes, a one-year-old, well, once they start walking, can start to help you with chores now for us this looks like the cleanup song which i mentioned but also i have her give our dog treats after our walk in the morning and night want to give a treat to your doggy okay give it to your doggy 
Good job, that's a good doggy. And for my apartment building in particular, we have a sensor key, which she does on her own, and that way I can press the elevator button. I know not everyone has dogs, or a sensor key for an apartment building. So I would pick a chore that your child sees you do every single day because they learn by watching you and they want to mimic you. These are no pressure chores. I offer it. If she doesn't feel like doing it, obviously it's not a big deal. I can do the sensor key, I can feed my dog. These are non-messy things. I would definitely suggest picking something that isn't too messy, but something your child sees you do every day, whether it's water a plant, putting your keys in a key dish, just something that happens routinely. And I'm telling you, this helps their confidence so much. Whenever my daughter does the sensor key and I clap and I say, good job, she beams so much. It is the cutest thing in the world. She is so proud of herself. And so having these little chores can really help build their self-confidence. It's not about doing child labor. It's really just building them up and letting them explore their independence. And eventually, if she wants to do my dishes, she can do my dishes. <laughs> Number five is going to be for mealtime. Start small and unintimidating when you offer food and have more prepared on the side. This will help with throwing, which yes, still does happen but I've noticed it lessen a lot more when I offer smaller portions. So still definitely offer a variety, but just maybe two or three pieces of each item. And then when one item is finished, let them explore the other items if they want to. If not, you can replenish that one item. Number six, and this is something I have to remind myself all the time, even though it's so simple, but it is always have a diaper bag packed the night before. Even if you aren't planning on leaving the house the next day, there have been so many times when I have realized during an awake window that we need some outside time, we need to get out of the house. And rather scrambling in that moment to prepare a diaper bag, I have one already ready to go. It has saved me so many times. Just always have a diaper bag ready. You never know what is gonna happen. With the exception of snacks, I will add that same day, but diapers, wipes, diaper cream, change of clothes, backup passy, small toy, snacks. That's really all you need after one. Number seven, and I feel like this is such a struggle for so many new parents, even though the answer is so simple. But it is how to dress your baby. The answer is like yourself. With the caveat of a newborn, they're probably gonna be bundled a little bit more than you. But for the most part, this is also one of the reasons why I love to dress like my daughter is for the sake of knowing she is 100% comfortable in what she's wearing climate wise. This also goes for sleep sacks. I have like a puffy duvet from Ikea and I found the most similar sleep sack to that was the Kite Baby Sleep Sack. I sleep in a t-shirt and my duvet. So she sleeps in a t-shirt and a one tog kite baby sleep sack. The temperature is normally between 70 and 73 in my house and I know if I'm fine, she's fine. It can be a stressful situation. The answer is just have your baby dress just like you. Obviously, you don't need to do matching outfits like me. I know I'm a little over the top with that. Like right now, I'm shopping for fall. I bought myself a beanie, a sweater, and sweatpants. I bought my daughter those same items. Number eight, sorry, my foot's asleep, but I don't wanna stop filming because I really feel like my daughter's gonna wake up. I feel it in my spidey sense, but number eight is when you see independent play happening, let it be. Now, I don't want you to stress out if you find your toddler baby not doing independent play. It does take a while and every toddler child is gonna be different. It did take a while for us to get there, but I feel like I noticed her doing it more and more when I would allow her to do it. So the way my apartment is laid out, if I'm standing in the kitchen and she goes into the nursery, I can see her without being in the nursery. I also have everywhere in my house super baby proof. It was only a couple minutes at first and I can see her and I know the environment is safe. And then when she comes back into the kitchen, of course we engage, I can play with her. But if she ventures off on her own, I just kept letting her do it. Now she'll be in her nursery, looking through her books, looking through her toys for like 15 minutes by herself. But it is okay and healthy to do independent play. You are not 
a bad mom. It is, it is actually a good thing. Number nine. Now in my last video, I mentioned one of my big buy favorites, which was the slumber pod. I do have another one, which I really did not think was going to be one of my favorite items, but it has come in handy way more times and uses than I thought. And that is the nugget couch. The thing I have been using it for is a little precursor to the couch and also a safety net to my couch. I have hardwood floors in my living room, but I did get the ruggable with an extra cushion pad. So there is a little bit of a softness to it, but the nugget couch was a game changer. So I push it right up against my couch and what it has allowed my daughter to do is independently get onto the couch by herself, which she loves. Anything you can do to help your child have independence, she wants to do things on her own. Even me putting her socks on, she'll rip them off and try to do it herself. And what if the great prophecy was just a made-up story? Papa. What is the Side note, my dog also has bad hips, and so it has allowed my dog to get independently on the couch. It's just been an all over win because now she can get on. If she gets off on a weird way, tries to maybe roll off, she rolls right onto the nugget, and it is the perfect, safe little landing. The nugget couch is a like stackable, movable, modular, can't say that word couch, but you can do a variation of different things with it. I built a fort out of it when my daughter was sick. It is, like I said, a bigger baby buy. I don't remember exactly, but I bought it for my daughter for her first birthday. It does take like six weeks to come to you. So if you are interested, I would get it in advance, but yeah, I'm obsessed with it. Side, side note. I did hear that the Nugget couch has like a private Facebook page for like adult nugget ideas i don't know i'm single so if you're looking for like another reason to get it and you're with i guess you could no you can't do it alone can you no that's no i don't know what i'm saying anymore i'm just throwing it out there there's a lot of uses for this big baby bite number 10 and i feel like this is such a thing i hear every youtube mom talk about but it is so good but in the off chance you haven't heard about the instagram page big little feelings it gives you gentle parenting ideas but if i have one big takeaway from that instagram page that i have put into use and i have seen good good things from it is when your toddler is having big feelings what some people would call a tantrum or an outburst is one to remain calm yourself your child is going to feed off your energy Two, a big feeling is not a time to try to teach a lesson, but you can empathize the situation even if it's something that doesn't make a lot of sense big picture. Maybe it's that the baby doll your child is holding doesn't want to eat the banana. But number three, and this is the biggest thing, if you forget the other two, you can just skip to three, is to offer your toddler two different options. Okay, let's not, let's go in the living room. Do you want to walk into the living room by yourself or do you want to walk with my hand? Yeah. Yes, you can walk with my hand, boo-boo. That's so nice. Do you want to watch Pocahontas? No. Yeah, do you want to go? Okay. Let me just close this. <laughs> it can be simple options. It can be, do you want to walk over here by yourself or do you want to hold my hand when you walk over here? Do you want to read this book or this book? Do you want a yogurt pouch or do you want to walk in the hallway? Making a decision, it brings them out of what they're thinking about. It works like magic. I don't fully understand it. Use this not even for like a big feeling, but say if my daughter is in a drawer I don't want her to be in, I will offer two other options. Instead of bringing attention to what she's doing and making it seem more enticing or saying no, I just change the subject. I give two other options and she picks one. Oh my God, my foot's back asleep. My foot is back asleep. Number 11, I have a bonus one. I only did 10 last time. This is a teething tip hack. I gave you my popsicle hack last time. Popsicles are great for teething. Those silicone teething pops are great. Teething toys didn't really work for us. But I found teething foods to be 
one of the best things. If you find it hard for your child to eat when they are teething, that can be a common thing. The foods I love to offer are frozen waffles. They are so simple because you serve them frozen. You don't even need a toaster. You just open the box, pull out a nice cold waffle. My daughter loves them. Other great ones are celery and cucumber, but I'm telling you those frozen waffles are just so easy. So that is all she wrote down on her notes. I am out of hacks for now. If you have one you want to share, I would absolutely love that. Leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you'd like to see from me in the future. Like this video if you want more mom hacks or just wanna help out my channel a lot. If you are not subscribed, join our family and grow with us and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!